Canada just stepping into their midnight hour. We also want to thank God with the brethren in Venezuela over the time they are in right now. Over the brethren all over in Accra, Ghana waking up the first watch of the day over there in Accra. We thank God for the brethren in London. We thank God for the brethren in Tokyo, Rio de Janeiro at 3 a.m. in the morning. What a joy to be able to connect with each one of us at this time. The word of the Lord says in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after the supper, he took the cup. 
And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Want to pray over the bread, want to pray over the cup, and even just be able to commence in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Sister Rosalind, just pray over this in Jesus' name. Our Father who art in heaven, we worship you this day. We acknowledge your sovereign, your holy, your mighty. You are exalted above the circles of the earth. We are grateful for this prayer that you have put in us to worship you this day, even to proclaim, Lord, even of your faithfulness. Each day, my Father, Lord, as we partake, Lord, even of um, your body and even my blood, Lord, we pray that. You deliver us, Lord, from everything and anything, Lord, that gives us our relationship with you, my Father, and the fear of you. Sanctify the emblems you are about to use, Lord, even as we proclaim of your death and resurrection. In Jesus' name, we pray with us. Amen. Let's partake of the bread and of the cup in the mighty name of Jesus. us by his grace and by his power we bless the lord for the people in kolkata as the people of new delhi moving into their midday gate what a joy that the lord made us with different time zones that the earth does not revolve on the same time this also teaches us something that every time we lift our voices to the lord that he is more than able that he's able he's listening to our prayers that Every time you read the word of God, you draw closer and closer and closer to the Lord. Psalm 133. Today I'm reading from NIV 1984 version and I thank God. A song of essence, a song of essence of David. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like the precious, it is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. This type of a unity that the Lord has given unto us is a unity that is mighty and powerful. The word of the Lord says in Psalm 119, 
Open my eyes, verse 18, that I may see wonderful things out of your law. I want you to pray for yourself even as we commence this broadcast again together. Open my eyes. Just bow your head and pray. Father, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things. Open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things. Open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Open my eyes, Lord Jesus. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things. That I may see wonderful things out of your law. That I may see wonderful things, my sister Celestine. Welcome. Yes, at uh, this wonderful gate of time, we honor you, Lord Jesus. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Word of God, meditate on the word. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is a if the dew of Hammon was falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord restores his blessing, even life forevermore. Beloved of the Lord, what a joy to be able to come to you live at this time and just to share the word of God and to read out these scriptures majorly concerning this time and majorly concerning uh, you know the word of god that we are bringing to you hallelujah generational blessings many times we have had generational curses emphasize we've had you know uh, uh, you know that we've, we've had uh, many times uh, you know testimonies of people who have been delivered from generational curses and I thank God also there are generational blessings. Hallelujah. And I thank God for answers to prayer. I thank God for the testimony from you, my sister, Felista Timado. I thank God that, uh, hallelujah. She says, praise the Lord, brother Malcolm. I was called yesterday that I'm successful for this. Uh, I did and I should start the job on Monday. Thank you for your prayers. We thank God that this is a month of breakthrough. If at all you're expecting a breakthrough from the Lord, this is the time. The generational blessing that I'm talking about is that what is going to begin to flow from your life right now. Right now, as you are staying in the presence of the Lord, there is going to be a generational blessing going down even up to your fourth generation and beyond. So as you are reading the word of God, as you are staying in the presence of God, it is not in vain. It is not in vain, dear beloved. You are preparing a generation to meet the Lord. You are preparing a generation to know the Lord. You are preparing a generation to walk in the ways of the Lord. I encourage you, dear beloved. I encourage you, dear beloved of the Lord. I encourage you because I know that God is here with us. I know that he has lifted us to a new level and I know that how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together, when brothers live together. Hallelujah. How good and pleasant when, when God's people live together in unity. There is something that is bestowed on us. I want you to pray over your generations. Even if you are here, you're not married. You're trusting God to have, a, a, to have children. You're trusting God to start a generation. Your generation will be blessed. And I want to decree upon your life that indeed, as the Lord has allowed us to come in the place of prayer, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Psalm 112 says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. So this is 
something that the word of the Lord has already confirmed. I want us to lift our voices again and just speak a blessing of our generations in the name of Jesus. Yes! Thank you, Jesus, for the answers to prayer of our sister Felista. Continue to be exalted, our Father. Continue to be exalted, our Father. Continue to be exalted, our God. Be exalted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Beloved of the Lord. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. We are moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. And we thank God. Proverbs chapter 8. A very, very key and crucial scripture that each one of you need to know and need to really apply and also allow the Holy Spirit to, uh, you know, lead you lead you into that because one of the things that God has already purposed is to make you a blessing in your generation as you are seeking his face that you may make that you may operate at the head and not at the tail not at the tail at the head only Proverbs Beloved of the Lord, we are talking about generational blessings. And you know something about a generational something? Abraham had a problem with barrenness. Abraham stayed close to 99 years before he was he got Isaac. The same problem followed his son Isaac. Isaac stayed 20 years in barrenness before he was given twins. I want you to know that generational transfers are there. But the thing that you ought to do is to allow the Holy Spirit is to allow the Holy Spirit hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is to allow the Holy Spirit to cut you off and delink you from every generational transfer that is not profitable in your life. Every generational transfer, any generational transfer that does not glorify the Lord in your life need to be disconnected. By the time we are leaving this journey of 150 days of Psalms, you must deal with this matter. You must be tired of seeing cycles. You must be tired completely. Totally tired. You don't want to see cycles repeated. Repeated cycles. Repeated cycles. You don't want those cycles. You know. You want to believe God that God is going to do the supernatural over your life. Over your family. Over your ministry. Over, your, over every circumstance. Over every situation. Because our God answers prayer and is a good God. You must come to the place of trusting Him. You must come to the place of prayer. I remind you again of the eight watches of the, of the day. I remind you of 6 p.m. is the first watch. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the first watch of prayer. 9 p.m. to midnight is the second watch of prayer. Uh, midnight to 3 a.m. is the third watch of prayer. And 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. AM is the fourth watch of the night. So this is something that you need to learn and to also pray. Remain in the presence of God. Remain there. Remain. 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 Remain in the presence of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah. David Brothers in the background. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. 
Sak Siguna, Tycoon of the Lord. God bless you. Okay, okay, okay. Proverbs chapter 8. Listen to this. Does wisdom not call out? Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Proverbs 8 verse 2. Proverbs 8 verse 3. Beside the gates leading into the city, at the entrances, she cries aloud. To you, O oh men, I call out. At the entrances, she cries out aloud. To you, O oh men, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, gain understanding. Listen, for I have worthy sayings to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. Wisdom's call. Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 8. All the words of all my all the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. Thank you, Jesus. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. It's important for us to really understand the character of wisdom because we have purpose to be permanent students of wisdom. It's something that we need to trust God and believe that everything we do shall be led of God's wisdom, shall be led of His grace. Prudence is cautiousness, is being prudent. We need, you know, it's good judgment. It is, you know, good judgment. That is what I, wisdom, dwell together with good judgment. This is what wisdom is telling us, that we must possess knowledge and discretion. Because knowledge and discretion are part of wisdom. You're not supposed to, you know, just become too obvious everywhere and you reveal everything. If something the Lord tells you is a secret, you just keep it to you. Not even to the next body. Not even to, the, not even to yourself. Don't tell you. If the Lord tells you this is not the time for this matter, do not arise that matter. Verse 8, 13 says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance. So if you need to have fear of the Lord, you must hate pride and arrogance. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise and arrogance must be something that is totally far from you. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Again, it continues to say in verse 14, Cancel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. By me kings reign, and rulers make laws that are just. By me princes govern. By me princes govern, and all the nobles who rule on the earth. Verse 17, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. Praise the Lord. I encourage you, beloved, that we may love wisdom, that we may desire wisdom, that we may look to God for wisdom. Because if we seek wisdom, we shall find. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. We all are in times when we are trusting God for finances, we are trusting God for health, we are trusting God for different types of things that mark prosperity. As you are seeking the Lord, the scripture tells us that with me are riches and honor, verse 18. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness. 
That is the place where you'll find wisdom in the way of righteousness. You will not find wisdom in the way of uh, of 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 of, of, uh, of unrighteousness. You will not find wisdom in the way of sin or injustice. It says that I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. Now, this is uh, uh, Proverbs eight verse twenty. Not something, my dear friend, that the foundation of the throne of God is built on righteousness and justice. Now. Righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. Wisdom walks in the way of righteousness and along the paths of justice. So basically, wisdom is the material that makes the foundation of God. Because as you read, you notice that before the foundation of the earth, I was there. Wisdom is declaring. Wisdom is the power, is the spirit. Hey, glory. Wisdom is a spirit. Wisdom is spirit. So you must desire to get the wisdom from the Lord because the wisdom from the Lord is spirit. You, you know, one of, the 11, uh, one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of wisdom. You must believe God that indeed as you are trusting in him, that wisdom is coming to you. Here he says, I stand here and make a call and I say, come to me. Wisdom stands and calls and says, come. Glory be to God. Walk, I walk in the way of righteousness and along the paths of justice. Verse 21, bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. I want you to lift up your right hand and say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Fill me, fill my treasuries, make them full. Fill, fill, fill my treasuries. Fill my treasuries. Fill my treasuries. Fill my treasuries, Lord. Fill my treasuries. Fill my treasuries. Oh, Father. With me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. This is our portion. Proverbs chapter 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that indeed you're opening our eyes to see the Lord. Wisdom is the source, oh God. Wisdom yields better than choice silver that indeed hallelujah father we pray that we may walk in the way of righteousness lord lead us in the paths of justice lord god that you may bestow wealth oh god on us oh my father and fill our treasuries oh god fill make our treasuries full make our treasuries full in the realm of the spirit lord let the treasury of malcolm david be full in the name of jesus say your name make the treasury of malcolm david to be full in the name of jesus make that treasury of malcolm david to be full in the name of jesus full treasury full treasury full treasury in the name of jesus lord i call on you for wisdom I pray for wisdom. Give me wisdom, Lord. Let me be walking in the way of righteousness, oh my Father, and the path of justice. In the name of Jesus, help me to walk in the path of righteousness, in the way of righteousness, and in the path of justice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we release this generational blessing. We release this generational blessing to our children's children. Father God, I pray that God, you may release wisdom to my generation. We release this generational blessing. We release this generational blessing. In the name of Jesus, generational blessing, riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity, generational blessing, generational, generational. It does not end with Malcolm David. It continues. It goes down to his first generation. It goes down to his second generation. It goes down to his third generation, the fourth generation, up to the tenth generation. My Father, we release that blessing. May you bestow wealth. For we love you, wisdom. May you bestow wealth. For we love you. Make our treasuries full. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It says, verse 22. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Before his deeds of old, I was appointed from eternity. 
From the beginning, before the world began, when there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs, abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. I mention to you, the righteousness and justice are the foundation of the Lord's throne. It says again that in my path, the path of righteousness, it says that, that I, I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. Where the throne of God dwells is righteousness. Where the throne of God dwells is justice. So as we are seeing that God brought him out before the first of his work, before his deeds of old, that was when wisdom was released. When there were no oceans, verse 24, I was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains settled in place. Before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the earth or its fields or any dust of the world, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked off the horizon of the face of the deep, when he established the faces above and fit securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary. Wisdom was there. So that the waters would not overstep his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was the craftsman as its side. Hallelujah. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the Lord of wisdom was there. Rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Verse 31. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Now, my sons, listen to me. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Those who keep my ways. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me. Watching daily at my doors. Waiting at my doorways. For whoever finds me, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. Beloved, we, as we do this journey of 150 days of Psalms, have purposed to do what it says in Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 34. It says that blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, watching at my doorway. For whoever finds me, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me, harms himself. And all who hate me, love death. Mm. Proverbs chapter 8. We bless the name of the Lord. We honor him. We honor him. Mm. Yes, Lord. We go to Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Just my body, my soul must be red. Breathe on me. Generational blessing flowing down from you to your tenth generation. Hallelujah. Not a curse, but a blessing. That's right. On me, dear Lord. Breathe on me. Worship the Lord. 
Worship Him. Worship Him. Say, touch my body, my soul, my spirit. Ah, express your appetite to the Lord. Lord, I long for you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I look to you and your strength. Say, lay your hands on me. Tell Lord, breathe on me. And take the rest of our blessing. How good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil of Aaron flowing down, flowing down, flowing down his beard, down his robes. Father, we declare your generational blessing upon Malcolm David, upon his children, upon his wife. Lord, we decree and declare generational blessing. Lord, yes, wealth and honor, enduring prosperity. Father, we walk in wisdom. We receive that. We receive that. We receive that. My body, my soul, my spirit. We receive it, O God. We receive it, my Father. We receive the wisdom. We receive your wisdom, O Father. Hey! We receive it. I receive the wisdom from you. I receive your wisdom, Lord Jesus. I receive your wisdom. Yes. Your fruit is better than fine gold. What are you? What you yield surpasses choice silver. Lord, I walk. You walk in the rebel. I want know you more. My body, let it to tell him I want to know you more. I want to love you. Thank you, Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And Ecclesiastes chapter 2, this is what it says, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, by the grace of God. I said, I thought in my heart, come now and let us test what is good. But that provide, proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is foolish. And what does the, what does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly, my mind still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was worthwhile for men to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. I undertook great projects, built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water grooves of flourishing trees. I made, I bought male and female servants and other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired men and women singers in a harem as well the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my work, and this was the reward of all my labor. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, and what I had told to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. Ecclesiastes 2, verse number 12. Then I turned. Then I turned. Then I turned. My thoughts to consider wisdom. 
and also madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise man has his eyes in the head. This verse of verse 13 say that I saw the wise man has eyes in his head. While the fool walks in the darkness, but I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Then I thought in my heart, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said in my heart, this too is meaningless. The wise have their eyes in their head, meaning that they get to see. Whereas the foolish, the scripture says, they walk in darkness. Again, in the book of First John chapter 2, verse 11 there on about, it says that he who hates his brother walks in darkness. A generational blessing. In fact, in one of the translations of Psalm 133, it says, How good and pleasant it is when brethren come together, when brothers come together in unity, when they come together in unity, when they come together. There is a blessing that comes. That's why I encourage you to look forward to a time when you can gather together as your families and just return to the Lord. It's a prayer that you begin to make. And I know it is possible to separate yourself from generational transfers of evil, of curses, of what? Things that your ancestors and forefathers did that did not glorify God. We must learn to bring ourselves before the Lord, deleting our background in the, into the presence of God by the blood of Jesus. Whatever was done in, the, in, in your generations, whatever was done, um, your fathers did, your mothers did, it does not glorify God, then we delete it by the blood, the blood of Jesus. If you have children, you take it upon themselves, yourselves, to dedicate these children to the Lord. A lot of you, a lot of people in Africa particularly, they have traditional ways of naming their children. And if maybe this message is coming to you when you are already under this kind of uh, a naming way, you need to now separate your children from your generations. You know, like you hear them say, oh, this is my grandfather, this is my father, this is my mother. Oh, come here, my mother. Let me tell you, beloved of the Lord, it sounds good and nice. But the generational transfer that you download to your child, especially if those people you are naming your children after did not glorify God. One thing that you do is that you continue the generational flow into their life. If the ancestral flow did not please the Lord, it continues. I've seen families where all the people named after the particular man, all of them are drunkards. Some of the names... They mean drunkard. Some of them mean the one who drinks a lot. <laughs> now you expect that child to live all the days of his life without with pleasing the Lord when there's a limitation already on their life. You need to disconnect them and hand them over to the Lord that anything that is looking for them better go to look for them where the Lord is. If you come to look for the background of Malcolm David, you'll not find it. It's deleted. It's not there. The file is missing. I don't have a file that reminds me of my past. Because I have learned, and that's what I've come here to bring to you today, wisdom and knowledge that you may understand what the scripture is telling us. Ecclesiastes 2.16 says, For the wise man, like the fool, will long not, will not be long remembered. In days to come, both will be forgotten. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. Ecclesiastes 2, 17. It says, So I hated life, and because the work is done under the sun was so grievous to me, all of it is meaningless. I chasing after the wind. I hated all things I had toiled for under the sun because I live because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool. Yet 
he will have control over all the work which I poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a man may do his work with wisdom, knowledge, and skill. And then he must leave all he owns to someone who has not worked for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What does a man get for all the toil and anxious striving with which he labors under the sun? All his days his work is pain and grief. Hmm. Even at night his mind does not rest. This too is meaningless. Listen to this now. Verse 24. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This too I see is from the hand of the Lord. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the one, to the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless and a chasing after the wind. You must realize whatever you are doing right now, you are on either part, you are on one or the other side. Either you are gathering and storing up wealth for it to be handed over to the one who pleases God, or you are pleasing God and he gives you wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. And allows you to enjoy the toil of your labor. It's important to note this. You can do a lot of international travel, do everything, work so hard, do everything. Anxious striving. It says that all the toil and anxious striving. And then you must leave it to someone who has not worked for it. This too is meaningless. And a great misfortune. Esther! Hey! Esther! Chapter 10! We have come to the end of Esther. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. What you say, yes, you. There is no other God like you. Hey! I love this song. Listen. All by yourself. Hallelujah. There is no other God like you. Final chapter.
you are God all by yourself. What you say, yes, you will do. I encourage you, this month again, we are going to be doing another Esther fast as we conclude the 150 days of Psalms. We bless the Lord for giving us the grace, the capacity, and the anointing to be able to do this uh, wonderful work uh, that he has allowed us. Esther chapter 10, it has only three verses, and I will read. King Sussex imposed tribute throughout the empire to its distant shores, and all his acts of power and might, together with a full account of the greatness of Mordecai, to which the king had raised him. They are, and are they not written in the book of Annals of the Kings of Mads and Persia? Mordecai, the Jew, was second in rank to King Sarses, preeminent among the Jews and held in high esteem by many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of the Jews. This man Mordecai was always at the gates, but as the book of Esther comes to end, it ends with the greatness of Mordecai, that he was second in command. He was the prime minister of that entire kingdom. He was the second in command after the king success. That Mordecai the Jew is written, was second in rank to king success. We also want to take this time to just thank God for the successful elections that have just concluded in Israel. We thank God for the new president that has been um, elected there in, uh, in, in, in Israel. We thank God for that because this nation is very, very key. We are not commanded to pray for the peace of Jerusalem when we have, when we have, um, when we have uh, what do you call it, when we have trouble there. It's a command that is in the scripture that says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that they love thee. It is a command. It is a command. It is not something that we are, we use news events to pray for them. It is something that the Lord said clearly that, you know, we must pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank God for what he has done for a peaceful election over there in Israel. We thank God for the new president that has been formed. And just like what I'm telling you about generational transfers, his father was also a president many years ago. You see, the generational transfer is a blessing that comes upon that. And um, we thank God for, for, for what has happened there in, in Israel. And we thank God that the Lord has allowed us to see a successful time as we have a president, um, you know, uh, it was called, the first one who was there was Reuven Rivlin, and now he's going to give, uh, yeah, this, this other one that has taken over there. So let me give you the exact names of these uh, Jewish friends of ours in Israel, because I bless the Lord for his goodness and his mercy, and also for allowing us to be part of this wonderful end time that we are seeing great things happening in the Middle East. We are seeing the power of God moving in that time, seeing the grace of God moving in that time, seeing the hand of God over the nation. That we have President he Isaac Herzog is the new president. Herzog, Isaac Herzog, President Isaac Herzog is the president of Israel. And is the 11th president of Israel. So we are yet to see what is happening. Because the number 11 denotes quite a number of things in the scriptures. And I thank God because um, Cham, Chaim Hazog was the country's, also was the country's president. So his son, President Isaac Hazog, I hope I am pronouncing it properly. <laughs> president Isaac Hazog is the one who is the new president. He's the president. Mazal Tov is the new president of Israel. And we thank God that he has been, uh, you know, he has been given that mandate now to rule over the nation of Israel as president. Mordecai was second in command, like the way we have the president and then we have the prime minister. 
We thank God that we have seen in the book of Esther the wonderful things that happened even during the reign of King Sarsis. We are able to see how Vashti was ousted. We are able to see the favor of God. We are able to see how God came through for the nation of Israel over that time. Let us go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, 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 Hebrews. Hebrews. You worship and behold your face, the light of your good time of shines on us. And we read that your love. Hallelujah. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us. And we radiate your love. Yeah. We worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us. And we radiate your love. Yeah. Your goodness looks good on us. Hey, and we wear your glory, glory, <laughs> and we wear your glory. As we worship and as you stood on us, your goodness, our Father, transfer generational blessings to our families. We release those blessings upon us. And we wear your glory. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us. And we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us. And we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us, and we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us, and we radiate your love. Your goodness looks good on us. chapter 5. This is a warning against falling away. We have so much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. This is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Verse 11. I now come to verse 1. It says, every priest is selected from among men. This is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. I gave you a preview from verse 11. We are coming there. It says, Every high priest is selected from among men and is appointed to represent them in matters related to God. To offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. Verse 3. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as the sins of the people. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was called. So Christ did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melzedek. Verse 7. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and he was hard because of the reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Verse 9, And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was um, was a priest whose beginning and end is in the Lord. We'll uh, have another time to just share about that. Verse 11. 
We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. Paul writes to the Hebrew church and he tells them, we, are, we have so much to say about what? The Melchizedek kind of a priesthood. And he says, because the Hebrews are slow to learn. Hmm. It is hard to explain to them. Verse 12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk is still an infant. Is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Beloved, you cannot have come all the way from Psalms 1 to Psalms 133 and still you need us to explain to you the elementary truths. You need to know that if at all you are not walking in righteousness, you are not acquainted with the training of, with the teaching of righteousness, then you are still living on milk, being still an infant. Let us therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death, and of faith in God, instruction about baptism, the raising of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. This is Hebrews chapter 6 verse 3. I have to stop there and go to the book of Revelation because we shall continue today, uh, we shall continue today 134. And um, I thank God because of what is helping us to do. Uh, we are closing in on day 150 and we shall be having some great mission uh, having we shall have you uh, this wherever you are you know do an Esther fast thank God we you know many times we come to fast because we have our needs but also we can fast for the Lord we fast for him we fast to be closer to him we fast for the Lord. We mourn like for a firstborn son. When the spirit of supplication comes, he says that we mourn like a first, for a firstborn son. We mourn. We mourn like for a firstborn son. We thank God for what he's doing and what he has already done and for his goodness and for his mercy. We go now to the book of um, Revelation. Revelation chapter 10. Your goodness looks good and you will glow. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation 10. Revelation 10. Revelation 10. Revelation 10. The word of the Lord says in Revelation 10. Revelation, Revelation 10, Revelation 10, Revelation 10. It says, Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he gave out a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Then the angel I had seen standing in the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven, and he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, the sea and all that is in it. And he said, There will be no more delay. Hallelujah! This is your season of breakthrough, beloved. 
Again, we announce it. There will be no more delay. Verse number seven. It says, but in the days of the, in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished. Just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. We read somewhere that the mystery of God is Christ. So it says here, the mystery of God, the mystery of God, the mystery of God, the mystery of God, the mystery, eh? says the mystery of God, namely Christ. Christ is the mystery. It says that when the angel, when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke once more. Go take the little scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing in the sea, on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour and in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my mouth turned sour, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. You must prophesy about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. I thank God that this is the time we are in to prophesy over nations, over languages, and kings. Beloved, you have gotten some outline on how you can pray, how you can seek God. So I encourage you to continue. Don't stop here on this broadcast. Continue. Seek God. Pray. Run with the word of God. Generational blessing begin to flow to your children's children. Hallelujah. If they are there physically, pray over them. Speak a blessing in the name of Jesus and lead them to Christ. That's the most important thing. Lead them to Jesus. Lead them to Jesus. I want you to pray with me there if you are not born again. Romans chapter 10 verse 1, uh, verse 9 it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I encourage you, beloved, to pray and receive the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. As I'm ever before you, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Thank you so much. Shalom. Blessings. Shalom. Thank you so much. Asante sana. Thank you, Lord.